Serena Williams about to get set on center court. We go to Cliff Drysdale and Mary Carrillo. Cliff. There is so much tradition here at Wimbledon. Center court day two, women's champion from last year, first match up. That's part of the tradition here. She's from the United States. She's the number one player in the world. She's the top seed here. She's expected to win it again. It's Serena Williams and Jill Krabass, both of the USA. And a friendly hello and a good morning to you, everybody. Cliff Drysdale alongside Pam Shriver. And first of all, let's talk about the postscript at the French Championships because Serena Williams said there, Pam, that nobody could beat her but herself, and she lost in the semifinal. What happened? Well, clay has never been Serena's favorite surface. We have to remember that a year ago, Serena had never been past the quarterfinals of a clay court event. And then, of course, she went on the tear and went to win her first French Open. But the surface does not suit Serena Williams. Her power ground strokes do not mean as much. That's why when we're going to take a look at our mass mutual predictors and see a couple of the points from the French Open, you'll see the frustration on the face of Serena Williams because she has to do so much more to win a point. This is in the semifinals against Anna Arden. Look at the get there. This combination would be a winning combination on a grass court, not so on clay. Anna Arden could stay in the point, and Serena goes for too much on the fourth hit of the rally. Impatience. That's what got Serena Williams, as well as some fine play from a great clay court player who knew when to anticipate some of Serena's shots. But on the grass courts, as we saw last year in the finals against her sister Venus, the power means so much more. The combination, the second big shot can be a winner so much more easily for Serena Williams, and that will lift her mood and thumbs up for Serena, not just last year, but also here as she is the heavy favorite to defend her championship. She's only lost three matches this year, and uh, they've all been on clay. She has not lost on any other surface since the clay, since November to Kim Kleisters. So she comes in here without any grass court matches, but she had eight days off Cliff to kind of recharge the batteries, and she's coming in here feeling fine. And what a nice opportunity this is for Jill Krabus as well, because this is the center court. This is the first match of today's play here on center court. Remember what happened at this time just 24 hours ago, Leighton Hewitt going down. Can the same thing happen today? Well, Jill Krabus is so excited about this opportunity. This is the biggest match of her career. Look at the smile on her face. She's as fit as she can be. She is a ground stroker that doesn't have a big weapon and that's the problem but her attitude is fantastic she's known for a week that she is going to have this match it's the longest you have to anticipate a match throughout the year this set serena williams to serve it's a nice sound when you're the defending champion Play. first set serena williams to serve the last time she hit a ball here on this center court was when she won the title first ball of the 2003 campaign at wimbledon Fifteen love. Thirty love. Polite applause here from this crowd. They are they so well informed. Thirty love. Oh. And a second serve here from the defending champ. Jill Kravis would love to just have some rallies in the first game. Both players, Cliff, are going to be very nervous. Uh, having played doubles with Martina Navratilova for over 10 years, and nine times Martina walked out for this special match as the defending champ, and nine times she was extremely nervous and excited. Pam, in the men's division, you know, there you can talk about the defending champ last year. He goes 15. out uh, yesterday. In the women's, Serena Williams is the clear favorite, for really for everybody. Although she has lost her last three tournaments, even though it's clay. Just a huge difference for the rest of the field to know that Serena has not won a tournament well, since March in Miami. So does she have to make her mark here, make a statement today? You know what? If she doesn't stay ahead of Kleisters, she may not be number one in the world after this tournament. And very few people realize that. I mean, Kleisters has been creeping up on her. Game is Williams. 
Serena Williams winning the first game. Who has the edge? Well, Cliff, I know this is going to be a huge surprise to you, but you know who has the edge? Serena nah. Williams. I know, I know. Uh, the ground strokes, I'm giving Kravas at least uh, equal to, but if Serena cuts down on the unforced she errors, I mean, clearly she's, she's the favorite there as well. On everything else, Serena has the edge. And an edge. This is breaking news from the center court at Wimbledon. City love. At Pam's driver, the edge goes to this young lady. Taking on Jill Krebus, who grew up in East Greenwich, played tennis at the Lincoln High School in Providence. It's in Rhode Island, home of the International Tennis Hall of Fame. And it's so fabulous when you can share this championship with your family. That's her dad, Norb, on the left, Cam. Her mom in the black turtleneck, right in front of Oracine Price. The family sit so close together here. Serena's family and friends in the top row, the friends box. Hey, were they going to come over anyway, or did they come over for this? I asked Jill that, and, and that's her brother there and her coach, Raj, on the right. And Jill said they were coming over anyway, but the thing with the draw here at Wimbledon, it comes out a, a week early before this match, so they had plenty of time. They probably couldn't have gotten that, uh, you know, special two-week-in-advance air deal, but they were coming over anyway. A sign in the nerves. That kind of mishit. It was a pretty easy shot. Serena just pulled off it early. Both players need to take their time early. You know, Serena may even be more nervous than Jill Krabes. I mean, I know that sounds like a wild one, but it's just something special as a defending champ. How many doubles titles did you win right here on this court? Uh, we, Martina and I won five championships here. And Martina is going for her 20th overall. She, she's playing the mixed and the ladies doubles. Game is so you know about the feeling of a winner coming back the next year. Jill Krebis, uh, NCAA singles and team champion, 96 One for the University of Florida. And she spent a couple of years as a Longhorn in uh, her early stages, college tennis. You know, I also know what it's like to play against an opponent that can intimidate you. I played in the semifinals here a couple of years in a row, Steffi Groff. Her Grand Slam run in 88 was one year, and it, it was just such a tough scene. Even after you'd played five matches, it was tough. So Jill Kravis, what she wants to have happen is have Serena be a little below her best, make some of those unforced errors, and have Kravis do what she did in that last game, win the points that she stays in, get as many balls back as possible, and hope Serena commits the unforced. 30 love. She is a gym rat. She loves to work out. She does a lot of core stability work, balance work on the gym balls. She is as fit as you can be. Oh. It seemed like every time I went to the gym at the French team. Open before we started our coverage, I would see Jill Kravis in there doing all sorts of different kinds of work. The variety of her workout was very impressive. And so many of the players now are doing that. They're going to the gym, they're enjoying cross training, doing different things to help your tennis. Fact, her coach says she's in as good a shape as she's ever been. Jill, Jill Kravis is one of the most fit players on the tour right now, and she just doesn't have a weapon that can hurt Serena. And you could see on that last one, she, when she's running and she's stretched, she doesn't have the power that Serena can reach out on the run and just boom a winner past you. Who does? Well, well Capriati can hurt you from out wide. Venus can when she's on. Just, just, just a few at the very top. 
Sister Venus? To Serena Williams, 2-1, first set, center court live at Wimbledon. Double fault on the first point, love 15, 2-1 Williams. Yeah, Jill Cravath needs to win those longer rallies. She had an opportunity on the return from Serena. The first ball that Serena struck was in the middle of the court, and Kravis does not have the firepower to take advantage. Next second serve. Closed in on the top 50 players in the world in January this year, Kravis. She was 51. That's her highest ranking. She had her coach, Raj, just pound balls at her for the last week. He was serving just outside the service line just to give her that extra bit of power, like that last point, but she still lost it, triple break point. Saves one, and be aware, yes, this is the early stage of this thing, but as well as Serena serves, these early breaks 15, can be lethal. Oh, yeah, and once Serena settles into this match, gets rid of the opening match defending champ butterflies, things can go pretty quickly. Oh. In games, Williams. Williams gets the early break, 3-1. Go through yesterday for me, Pam. You had some relatively easy matches. Kim Kleister's winning without losing, without losing a game. Lindsay Davenport had a bit of a struggle. Yes, Samantha Stosher of Australia is a good athlete. Davenport struggled. She's been nursing that sore foot. And to cover with a win, but easy? A, Davenport being a former champion, you have to respect her. I mean, it was pretty much true to form. I mean, nothing, even if there was an upset on the women's side, I mean, Leighton Hewitt would have overshadowed everything unless his girlfriend lost, but his girlfriend didn't even lose a game. Leicester's was awesome. And what a tough situation for her to come out right after Leighton had lost. <laughs> Serena Williams on a grass court. She just has the quick strike. She's the defending champ. She's so motivated because of her three losses on the clay. Weaknesses. I don't think she comes to net enough. And she makes unforced errors. She, sometimes on the long rallies, she can just give you some free points still. But one of her strengths was just there. The, the second serve cliff landed right inside the service line towards the corner. And on a grass court, she can even get some work on it, some, some spin, and it jumps up high. This grass court does take spin, notwithstanding it's quick and the ball gets low. It does take a jump if you, if you put the kick serve to Yeah, it. I think from years ago, you can hit a kick serve much better than you can now. I mean, it used to be you just hit the, the slice serve that would stay low and kind of run away from the opponent. But now, as hard as it, the courts are, it really favors the player who, you know, Agassiz's serve out wide, for example, is going to mean more on this kind of grass court. It's going to jump up higher. 30-15 after that double. Next, first serve. Pam, I want to revisit again uh, the French championships. Tears from Serena when she lost. Yep. She's, she's saying that she's not going to cry at this Wimbledon. The crowd were hugely against her in that match, or should we say for the Belgian? Both. Uh, and I think that 4-2 up, 30 love in the third set when Serena was serving. To me, that, that hand-holding up incident that Justine Anna held her hand up, Serena saw it, 
Nobody else did. Next, second, Not only did Serena at that point feel all the crowd was against her and all the energy on the court was for Justine Enna, but, but in Serena's eyes, she was also playing against somebody who wasn't playing fair. And I think that was the tipping point. She didn't hold serve again from to the rest of the match. Serena Williams holds on. She has the lead yeah, with the break for one first set. Send the court Wimbledon. We're alive day two. Williams leading 5-2. This is Jill Kreber serving. Love. Those are the kind of free points that Jill Kravitz, because she doesn't have a big serve. So when Serena misses a return, it's really an unforced error. But Jill Kravitz, very grateful for those free points. 30 love. Hello. Jill Kravitz won one grass court match a couple of weeks ago in Birmingham. Last week, Fortina. actually lost in the qualifying. But because she's fit and competes well, she can hang in there. She doesn't have the big shot which is a huge weakness on grass. And the intimidation factor at the moment, Cliff, I think she's keeping under control. Well, I was going to ask you about that. What is her mindset, Pam, in the early stages? I mean, this is a huge occasion for her, obviously. Maybe the biggest ever for her, and certainly the biggest opportunity. But as the match progresses and she gets a little into it, how do things change? If they do. Well, it, they would change if she can break serve here and then have to, to serve to try and really level things in the first set. But the way Serena's serving right now, even though Serena's not going to be all that happy with the f how she's played so far, just kind of nervously getting into the championships, she's really been rolling through her service games. Is Jill Krabus here just to put on a good show for this English crowd at the start of day two, or does she think she can win this match, Pam? Well, I think deep down, I don't believe she thinks she can win the match. I think she's trying to hang in there as best she can. I do think you start, a player like Kravis, you start by winning games and you get into situations and then as the match gets closer, you can reset your, your goals. 40 love. Like yesterday with Leighton Hewitt and the guy finally says, whoa, maybe I can, I mean, I can win this. Set points here for Williams. Still set point. Underway, Serena Williams winning the first set against Jill Krabus, both of the USA. American women have dominated the slams here in these past years. Love 15. Nearly since the end of the Steffi Groff era, and then Monica Sellis, of course, we claim her as American now. to forget the Swiss Miss. But since then, it's been the Williams Love sisters, the Briati. Davenport won here in 99 and won two other majors, 98 US Open and the 2000 Australian. In fact, Pam, it was Serena who made the first Grand Slam move at the 99 US Open. Yeah, Davenport was the defending champ there. 15 
99 US. And then big sis Venus took over. She won two Wimbledons in a row and two US Opens. Three straight times to net. Serena Williams only hit a couple of volley winners in the first set and right out of the gate. Trouble for Kravis on serve because Serena Williams is more aggressive in moving forward. Great point. Serena played against uh, Venus and beat her two years ago at uh, Key Biscayne, Miami. And since then, the tables have been turned, and Serena won four straight slam titles. Beating Game her older wins. sister in all four of them. Break a serve, Williams. First game, game second. Sets. Here's a look at it. Williams. Uh, happened in the first set. Well, both players came out a little bit nervous, but the defending champ, Serena Williams, showing off her all-court style with a backhand approach down the line, that simple forehand volley winner. One of only two volley winners, which is why that last game was interesting, first game of the second set. The power on the ground strokes, we talked about it at the top. It means so much more on a grass court than that red stuff over in Paris. Jill Kravis did hold serve three times in the first set, but Serena Williams' serve was untouchable, and you see the shake of her head. Serena was not all that happy with some of her play, but she had to be happy the way she served. Thirty love Williams, one game Williams, and one set under her belt. She only lost six service points. Very good on the first serve. Nine on four stairs from Kravis, but she's under a great deal of pressure at all times. Playing for so long, the two sisters were inseparable in every way. Is that left. still true, or is this whole Grand Slam competitive thing getting in the way of that beautiful sisterly relationship? Well, I, I think the beautiful sisterly relationship will always be intact, but they've got more things to, two games to love, second juggle sense. and to deal with than any other two sisters that I know of. I mean, we all have sister rivalry and things that you deal with with an older sister, an older sibling, but on the world stage, on stages like center court and the big courts all over the world, Next. number one and number Best two serve. in the world, now one and four, they're in uncharted territory. And it's really up to Venus now to readjust. And she's trying hard to do that here on her favorite surface. Love 15. You know, the fact that Venus is even here watching kind of shows you something. I mean, obviously, they could have been on the same half of the draw, but they're on opposite halves. So if they want, they can go and cheer each other on. And I, I think that shows a lot about Venus. Fifteen all. Thirty all. Two to Williams first set easily, and Jill Krebesh here is on the edge of a precipice. She's got a hold here. Biggest point of the match. 
and a good wide Both first ahead. serve. Not with a lot of power, but a wide serve with slice on grass means a lot more than any other surface. Really takes the spin nicely. She's on the board in the second set. First set for Williams. Back in a minute. Second set here on center court with Serena Williams, who's the top seed. 6 3, first set to Williams, and uh, two games to one in the second. Pam, um, you were talking earlier about she's being in danger of losing her number one spot. Yeah. But hold the phone. I know. She holds three slam titles. I understand, but Kim Kleister's record the last 12 months has been of great quality, especially since last year in the fall when Kleister started winning tournaments indoors in Europe and then won the WTA Tour Championship and in Los Angeles. And she plays more. And she plays more. And we found that out when Venus didn't get to number one for a long time, despite holding two summers in the row, the Wimbledon and the U.S. Championship. So the computer points reward the majors the best. But believe me, when you win the other tour events, you also get a lot of points. Love 30. And now break chances here for Kravis in the second set to get back on serve. What a turnaround. Kravis at 30 all in the last game, her service game. She's not lost a point since. responds well to love 40 15, and 1540 she's down she gets a little more motivated this came out of the blue these break points Serena saves a couple and when you're the opponent and you know that the number one player in the world can raise the level she can hit aces she can hit second shot winners well what do you do if you're jill kravis i mean maybe you stand a little further back you give yourself a little more time she tried to pick the one up the middle as it was serena was going out wide game kravis kravis breaks back first break for her in this match and it's two apiece in the second set. First set, Serena Williams. Two games all, second Kravis, set. an established top 100 player, 66th in the world this week. She was smart to go to the Serena Williams forehand when she did get her racket on a play. <laughs> 28-year-old, Jill Krabis, Rhode Did Island. Where she was born and that's still home to her. And this is what Jill Kravis has been waiting for. She's been waiting for a bad patch on both the serves and returns from Serena. And she has that moment now. How long can she ride this period out? Can she get a lead in the second set? Fifteen old. Serena should be feeling pretty much at home. This is a little bit like a South Florida day. Very hot here, sunny. Fantastic first two days of the championships. Flattened that forehead out down the line, crisp and clean. Watch again. Not That's many 15. winners from Jill Kravis, but she sees the line open here, and she doesn't even hit it that close to the sideline. T50. Serena's only won three points since she was up to love at 30 all on Kravis' last service game. And that's what she does so well. That strike force that she has. 40 30. Nobody can hit the ball as hard and with such an angle as Serena. Oh, 
know, she's got to try to hang on uh, if she can. Jill Krabis here, having just got the break back, it'd be crucial, as you were saying. Sounds like an echo in here, but she's got to try to get her nose out front. And has a chance here on this point. Yeah, the third game point now for Krabis to take a lead in a set. She was at one all in the first set, but other than that, Serena's had the lead from pretty much the start. She shared that with us, which I like also. This was not Deuce. a bad pass. No, I mean, Kravis kept the ball low. Serena finished. Her earring was almost dangling over the net. <laughs> she juiced it, that, that passing shot, Kravis. This angle, you can see how low the ball bounces on this grass court compared to clay. <laughs> yeah, but what makes a good grass court uh, is a firm Kravis. surface and uh, at Wimbledon the bounces are just about perfect until the second week and then the court gets chewed up in certain spots Deuce. then you get a different bounce because some of it is brown and some of it is green but the base is really it stays the same Kravis knows she needs to take a little walk here in this service game. She had 40-15, and she's had two more game points since. Let's take a 3-2 lead. Deuce. Watching day two, a coverage of the Wimbledon Championships. Williams. Top seed winner last year, Serena Williams, in action. Against Jill Krabis, USA. Second set, we're even. After all those game points, Kravis with a second serve break point down. And Serena got tentative. I mean, that's what she doesn't like, the champion there. She's thinking about how negatively she went into that yes. break point. She didn't take any risks. She just kind of hit the ball back medium pace, almost like it was the beginning of a warm-up. And when Serena is firing on all cylinders, full of confidence, that last break point, she would have capitalized on. The point would have been over quickly. shots well that down the line on grass because the rewards are there. Jill Kravis lays back the racket face, open stance, and just hits the corner perfectly. Game point. Game point. So Kravis holds on, and she's in front. This match turn around. Could it find out? 3-2, second set. Things are certainly different at this moment. Left 15, 2 3, Williams down in the second set. Oh. Seemed like just moments ago when she had the first set in hand and was cruising in the second with the break. Since then, she's been broken back. And now on her serve, Love 15, second set at 2 3. Baseline, you're moving forward to hit the overhead. 15 Your whole life, you usually hit overheads going backwards from the net. But Serena handled it nicely. Those are the awkward shots that really pays dividends to occasionally work on in practice. Little specialty shots. Well, that's nice anticipation. Well, Serena Williams 
easily called all her service games in the first set, but she's having trouble in the second, and if you can see the pattern of the serves, they are not that close to the extremes, except for the aces, which are the red ones. The other ones are in the middle of the court. The green are the second serve. Some of them are very short. She's placed nicely out wide on both the forehand side, on the deuce side, and also she occasionally loves that one out wide, but she's been peppering more the forehand side of Kravis. Every second serve except one to the backhand. Game point. Williams. In game is Williams. Williams holds on, so we're even now. Three apiece in the second. Three games, all second set. Jill Kravis played her freshman and sophomore years at the University of Texas, and she helped the Longhorns win the national title, 93. In fact, she's the only woman to be a member of a national championship team for two different schools. She finished up at the University of Florida. Yeah, from a Longhorn to a Gator. That's a big switch. You know, this is where Serena is trying to get the booster rockets going. I mean, when... When you've let your opponent back in a match, up, she was up 6-3, 2 love. Now at 3 all, Serena's just trying to kickstart it, get to a different level. Phil oh. Kravis is a real workhorse in the WTA Tour. You can see the first three all. years, she was somewhere in the mid-100s and then had a nice little breakthrough moving from 150 to 93. And it's been hanging around in that mid-50 to 60 range, which gets you into a lot of tournaments. She has one tournament title. That was the Japan Open, which is played in a big stadium. And that's a pretty good-sized tournament in Japan. It was last year. Talk about her personality, Pam. Oh, she's very she's outgoing better. and very approachable. I went to her about an hour and a half before this match. I said, Jill, do you mind? Can I sit and talk? She goes, sure, let's come mm. over here. She, mm. it's stepped me away from her family. She didn't want to give me all the scoop in front of her mom and dad and sister and brother. She gave me 10 minutes of her time. She was very open and honest and really looking forward to this opportunity. And the other thing that we should add to that is, uh, we've said it before, but her hard work. She's a very fit player. She should have her own, one of those videotapes, Fitness by Jill Kravis. 30, 40. She's more interested in this moment, though, in the center court at Wimbledon against the world's top player. She's done well, very well, but this is a break point against her serve at 3 3 second set. She lost the first. She tried to go for the big serve. That's not her game, but admire her for trying on such a big moment. There's the break the second time that she's broken in this set. Turn Serena was broken, but she'll serve and we come back. Serena Williams is the top seed, 15 love in this game. She has the break in the second, and she won the first against Jill Krabis. Looked like she was going to serve volley on that point. That's a play that Serena Williams has to start to implement a little bit. It's such a big serve, and the ability to take her opponent out wide on either side, it's just built to come in and Hit the volley away. It's a technique like on the volley. It's pretty good. I, I like Venus's technique on the volley a little better. Doesn't improve if you don't well, use it, does it? No, it certainly doesn't. I mean, and this is a perfect opportunity to do it when you're up a, a set and a break. It's now 40 love. I mean, right here. Come on, Serena. Let's Come see. Come on, Serena. Serve and volley. Out in front. Follow it in. 
No. Nope. Heck with it, she says, Pam. I, I've, I, I'm going to dance with you. Bring me to this party. All right. All right. in the second round in her effort to win another Williams Wimbledon Lynch, championship. Three, she won it sets. last year after winning the French. Then she won the US Open all against her sister. Then she won the Australian this year and that completed the Serena Slam. She lost in the... And she was talking in Australia, by the way, about not losing a match all year. That didn't happen. Well, now she can say, I'm not going to lose a match all year on anything but clay. And that's still alive. You're watching the Wimbledon Championships from set to court. It's Serena Williams, the world's top player, defending champion here. She like takes on Jill Krebis. Welcome to the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club, everybody. Cliff Drysdale, Pam Shriver alongside. When's the last time you played croquet, Cliff? 15 all. Been a while? You know, I was at the Hurlingham Club lot and I was tempted, but uh, it's been years. I don't even know the rules anymore. You didn't want to hurt your tennis game. <laughs> Here's Jill's dad, Norb. Norbert, short for. Mother is Cam for Ladies Camilla. Security players, please switch off all mobile telephones. Even on the center court, they'll have that reminder. Jill Cravis able to share this with her entire family. Sister actually lives here in London now. Her brother's over. I still don't think I have the record clip. I had 14 relatives my first Wimbledon because they thought it was going to be like my only Wimbledon. They didn't know it was going to be like 15 more. Yeah, I'm glad you... I thought you were going to tell me about when you played croquet. That's <laughs> better information. 30-15. Very nice as she gets it, 40-15, game point here for Krebis, her brother, by the way. 40-15. Played some college soccer. Good footwork there from Krebis, moving forward, just finding the sideline. Give her credit, Krebis, the way she's hanging in this match. She never played Serena Williams before, and I think that helps Krebis. She didn't have to worry about intimidation in the past. I don't want to make too much of it, Pam, but, but there's a match like this where she... I mean, she's 29. She's been around for a while. As uh, you see her Ooh. going, ooh, that can hurt. But she's up and she's ready to go. Still game point for her. But is, can a match like this tell her, hey, I kind of enjoy this, this stuff among all these people and oh. help her a little bit? Sure. The fact that she didn't just sort of fall over and lose like 1-0 and oh or... You know, we see so many women's matches with the exact same situation, a player of Jill Kravis' capability not be able to play up to their standards. And so she should give herself credit. She just lost a point there to get to 5-4. Game point again. Serena had a look at the court there. It looked as if either Kravis' shot was a little bit of a miss hit, a little bit of a spin. It didn't come through, didn't shoot through, and so Serena was way early. Miss hit the unforced error. Ooh. Deuce. That's why Jill Kravis will have a hard time getting well inside the top 50 in the world. The serve is a real vulnerability, but on grass it might stay a little lower and perhaps harder to attack. A uh, match point coming up for Serena Williams. Advantage, Miss Williams. A little bit of help in this, a lot of help in this game from Jill Kraber. She's uh, played it pretty tentatively. This could be it. No 
surprise in a friendly finish, Pam. Yeah, no, very friendly. The, you know, the most unique thing and the most unusual thing, perhaps, was actually when they walked out onto the court. It was the first time in the history of this championship that the women's winner, the defending champ, did not have to curtsy to the royal box. And the royals are always here. Do you like that? Or you, do you know, either way, I think the players enjoyed it. And I don't think they read anything into it, the fact that, you know, they were doing this traditional thing for so many years and uh, perhaps Ladies Serena and missed the curtsy. In the but in the meantime, if you leave your seat, please she's sure going to enjoy a second round you. match against please either Els Towns, who took her to 7-6-7-6 last year, or Barbara Rittner. And Mara Granville, give her credit, from Chicago, she wins her match against one of those tough Russians. Serena Williams, a winner, again, trying to repeat. She's the champion, the holder of the Great Wimbledon Championships. She's through to the second round. Back with more after this.